Hello everyone and welcome to the Clausura or the closing event of Clash 2022. I'm Sarah Jane Mason and I'm Simon Turner and we are the directors of the Lacuna Festivals which are now at an end. Yes, for the fourth year. For the fourth year we've come to the end of the festivals and it's always this big mix of feeling for us because we're obviously exhausted but we're also really elated um, and so we like to just provide this opportunity for artists to come and have a chat um, if they want to and just share how things have been um, for, for them, for you. So you can just shout out, we're a really small group this evening. So if you have anything that you would like to feed back about the festivals, perhaps we could start with good stuff, right? Like it's always nice to have good stuff first. We could do like a praise sandwich. I used to be a teacher and I was always thought that you should start with like something good, then put in the thing to improve and then finish with something good. So I think we start with something good. Praise sandwich. A praise sandwich, it's a thing. In education, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. So have you got something that you particularly enjoyed about the festivals? I loved all the events. Ah, okay. I mean, it was just so varied. I screwed up on the time, you know, because of, of uh, being in Canada once but then the fact that i can get it later makes up for it but there, it was there was just so diverse it was great thank you so much and on the time the time is something that every year causes problems and i don't know what to do about it i don't know how to make it more accessible for everyone and easier it's it was my fault you know i, I think it's pretty easy you say gmt plus one and then I just have to count backwards. But because I phone the West Coast a lot, I ended up counting the opposite way. And, you know, I just have to remind myself. <laughs> it's not just you, Deborah. Every, every year we have, like, we have artists tuning into events like three hours before the event's due. Like, <laughs> I have hours after. I've had notifications on the email for most of the day today saying, so-and-so has joined your meeting. I'm like, no, it's, it's like five hours. I'm eating my lunch. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a real problem. And um, it's not always easy. And I don't know what to do about it. But I might put it out there to the, to the hive mind and see if we can get some sort of clever answer from somebody. Um, yeah. yeah, we have a chat message. Let me read this out. What does this say? Peter Thompson, maybe Peter Thompson does not have um, the signal for video and sound, but we have a message that says, hi, Peter, thanks for joining us. Um, I love the different gallery styles. Oh, that's really interesting. Thank you. Because um, some people feel a bit funny about the more um, virtual ones, huh? So. Yeah, I think that that's, that's something that we've tried to incorporate. Um, because it's been it's been hard with the pandemic. We've tried to to keep things online um, as well as as well as physical. And we we've had we've got the virtual galleries, so you can walk around the gallery spaces. And we had the, the Sansar Gallery, yes, the virtual world, yes, more like the virtual world, yeah, yeah. the Flickr album. Yeah, the actual galleries. Yeah, there's kind of a lot going off, I guess, isn't there? Um, but yeah, it's difficult moving forward to know what to keep and what to um, what to ditch because at, at some <laughs> point, it's true though, isn't it? At yeah. some point, we're going to have to make some decisions. There's literally us two that does everything. So it's really interesting to hear what people um, are enjoying. Um, Rich in Denmark, how about yourself? Anything you've particularly enjoyed? Say it again. Is there anything that you've particularly enjoyed? Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I would like to be there with you in uh, your gallery. Maybe next year. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that as we move away from the pandemic, hopefully there'll be a return to how the festival was in 2019. I mean, this year 
we've had quite a lot of artists visiting but over like the whole month Whereas in 2019, there was quite um, an organized effort, wasn't there, for all of the artists to be there at the same time. There was like this really focused week of face-to-face -face events. Um, and that worked really well, didn't it? Yeah, this, this year we've had kind of artists popping in throughout the whole month, haven't we? We just kind of visit the island for a few days, come and see the galleries. But we had, we had, um, we had a little closing lunch today with we a did. few of the artists that were, that were on the island who called in to, to pick up their work and to say goodbye. So that, that was really nice. Yeah. And um, hopefully we can... In 2019, we had like a base um, and we recommended that people would stay there. And so then you get that kind of mix between the informal and the formal stuff you know like there were there were festival events happening and everybody went but then also because everyone was staying in the same place and there was a shared kitchen and there were shared facilities it meant that there was a lot of informal kind of networking and idea sharing and things like that and um i think that once yeah i feel like maybe next year we'll be able to work towards that again um, here in the Canaries, the pandemic was still kind of quite a thing until really recently, literally the past couple of months. And we just didn't feel confident enough inviting everybody and organising all that just in case the government decided they were going to shut us down again. Because here the lockdowns were quite severe and quite prolonged um, compared to a lot of the mainland. Um, so, yeah, we were just a little bit hesitant this year about that so maybe next year rich yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> we talk you into it. <laughs> yeah. so how about things that you think you've not enjoyed that much stuff that we could scrap it's right to say it again is there anything that you think we could get rid of? Something that you've not enjoyed or something that you feel is unnecessary? No, not really. Okay. Um, Deborah, have you got anything? Well, I feel the same. They, I thought it was all good. Like they, I don't know what it's like at your end, organizing so many different things all at the same time. It might be a little tiring but for me or for at our end it was just like this fabulous smorgasbord of different kinds of things and it was possible to pick and choose i saw the thing you posted of the lunch and i just wanted to be there but um for me it's also kind of nice that there is the virtual option um and you know i think getting just a wider group of people who might not be able to travel easily it's good but on the other hand I, it's interesting the, uh, the idea of going back to the in-person yeah it's really I'm really pulled in two directions because um like part of the joy of doing the festivals is meeting artists and like being in the space with artists and having that buzz yeah. but actually as a creative myself I've spent the past year investigating how to collaborate with people over distance without actually meeting them and so that's kind of interesting to me as well and I don't really want to eliminate that possibility of of being able to participate you know it feels like that's quite important still and will remain to be to be important you know I yeah well, I think that's that's kind of one of the one of the key parts of the festival is that, that we want to be a, an inclusive festival. Mm. Um, and so there aren't really, there aren't really any restrictions on who can partake, who can, who can exhibit. And so I think moving away from online stuff would limit, would limit kind of who can take part. But mm. Definitely yeah. think, think about my my partner is a writer and during the pandemic everything was virtual all the book launches the artist or the writer interviews and stuff and it was so interesting like if it's in downtown toronto maybe you get 50 people 
but virtually you get 300 from all over the world. Yeah. And it was amazing. You know, like she said, it, it feels like Cinderella because you're in your house on Zoom and then it's over and you're in your kitchen. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, just the variety of people. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird online stuff because sometimes you have so many people that you you literally can't fit them in the room. You know, like our plan, we can have up to 300 people and we have had events where there's been more than that. And then you have events like tonight when it's just a really small group and there doesn't seem to be any like rhyme or reason to it really. It's really difficult to predict. Whereas the events that are taking place here on the island, because there's like quite a small artist scene here, you can pretty much guarantee the amount of people that will come, who's, who those people will be, you know, and how long they'll stay for. So it's quite a different experience for us online, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But it can, all of this, com oh, sorry, I'm missing Peter's messages, hold on. I think the wide range of arts and different things make it hard to, to fit some, oh, maybe this is to find some things. Some mm. things to cut. I guess. Some things to to cut. We were asking what what things we could cut. Ah, okay. Yes, yes, that's really true. Because we don't want to be just a visual arts festival or just a uh, uh, an online festival. Or we kind of want to cross fertilize across the arts, you know, and, and across different areas. So yeah, that is why it's different to find things to cut, actually. Um, yeah. Okay. So some of those um, comments lead us on quite nicely to the other thing that I, I wanted to talk about a little bit, which is if you could develop the festivals in any way, what do you think you would do? I'm looking at you, but it's a question for everybody. <laughs> It's a question for everyone because these are everyone's festivals, you know. So, any ideas? Maybe panels. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Talk some more. Talk some more. Well, I just think of like our, you know, you, you there are these pa panels, and maybe three artists are on the panels, and there's a theme, and they're having a conversation with each other about whatever the theme is, yeah. and people can participate like this and contribute. But, you know, it's interesting, the idea of artists talking to each other. So, yeah, you're really great on the collaboration thing, but then that's the work. With the process of what they think about um, would be really interesting. Yeah, I yeah. really like that idea. I really like that idea. I went to um, a brand new art festival that's all about artist-led um events and spaces it's called juxtapose and it was in um denmark rich it was in denmark <laughs> it was in orhal i think that's how you pronounce it my my danish is non-existent um oh. but yes thank you um mm -hmm. but they had a similar kind of thing and they called it i can't remember what it was called it was something box and you could sign up for them. And then it was like a, a small number, I think it was up to five artists with like a little a little title of a question or a thought, yeah. something to do with an artist-led event or an artist-led space or a problem or the theme of the event. And, and you would just kind of hash it out for half an hour. So yeah, and it was really nice. It was really nice. Do you think that could work online, Deborah? I do. I do, because I've seen panels online, again, from um, for writers, not, as, not so much for artists, but what's the difference really? So, you know, in advance, they talk to each other and figure out how to frame the questions with perhaps a moderator, and then away they go. So for instance, I don't know if this is like your cup of tea exactly, but, but one thing that interests me is about making art. Sorry, the birds are noisy. I was gonna it's say, about, the birds want to join into this discussion, huh? <laughs> it's about making art in a time where things have become quite commodified and commercialized. So how do we keep this kind of aesthetic vision and not like brand ourselves in some stupid way or whatever? 
and also kind of the activist side of, of making work. So I really, I want to know what other people think and people in other places. Like I live in North America, but I lived in other countries. So for example, Turkey, where um, there the artist, there's really something at stake. Like you can get arrested if you do the wrong thing. Here, nobody cares. So it'd be interesting to, to just have a theme like that and have people talk. And I'm sure uh, people would join in the chat. And usually at the end, of, there's a Q&A that can be live. And, you know, I, I don't think online is a problem at all. That's really interesting because like I say I attended those events in person and I just didn't even think that that would be an option I really like that I really like that I think, thank you Deborah for sharing that I think did we not have a panel discussion last year last year an artist organized it was more like a round table discussion though there were like I don't know maybe six or seven artists um involved and they were just talking about their work to the festival and how it linked to the theme and kind of questioning each other and so it was almost like a group crit but kind of yeah. online yeah yeah and it, to be fair it did work and it was popular yeah so i've been writing notes i've got it all down with your name next to it so that i can get in touch with you next year and go so deborah <laughs> oh, okay. work fine no i'm happy to help set it up if you want Oh, for real? That'd be amazing. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm also now putting a big tick next to your name. <laughs> and Rich, have you got any ideas for how you would develop the festivals in like an ideal world, what you'd like them to become? You could, you could make a, an art camp with workshops. Again, is this online or is this in person? In person. Yeah. yeah and when you say an art camp is it an art camp for artists to give workshops to other artists and share their skills or is it like an art camp for artists to give workshops and charge like to get an audience what are you thinking yes maybe uh, uh, or with an exhibition in the end of uh the workshops at uh, art camp. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that could be really good too. There's a place on the island actually, it's um, a building that's part of a school and there they host kind of participatory workshops and quite often they end up in um, exhibitions. It's quite a new space, isn't it? It's yeah. opened up just this past year. So there might even be like a, a ready to go location for something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that would be good to engage the local community as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just I'm just scribbling down. Um what this is one of the things that I think about loads, which is who's missing from the festivals like I feel like there are voices that aren't being heard or people and communities that we're not really reaching um and I wondered if yeah if other people had thoughts about you know who's not in the room that needs to be big question <laughs> I mean, I live in Canada, right? And uh, there's a lot of very interesting indigenous art here um, that deals with history, memory, survival, and of course, just genocide and all of that stuff. And um, there are artists who do work within contemporary idioms, but make it their own. It would be great to have people like that, not just from Canada, but from other parts of the world, like South America or, yeah, you know, India, different places. Mm. Yeah, it really would. It really would. I don't know how to um, reach those people. I guess it wouldn't necessarily be directly. It would be through someone who's already engaged with those communities, like maybe someone who knows or works or lives there. I don't know. Or Facebook groups sometimes. 
power of the internet. I do love the internet. <laughs> I love it more now I'm not a teacher. <laughs> what do you think, Simon? Well, I, I, oh, I find it really hard because even though we're, we're based on this little tiny, tiny island in the middle of nowhere, kind of our reach is worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I one of the problems that we have every year is engaging the local artist community. Mm. And I, that's something that, that's definitely a voice that, that I feel we miss. We haven't come up with a sort of how to engage the local community as much. Is the, lo is the local community there? I live in a tourist place, right? So is the local community there, is it, are they mainly making work for tourists or is there a kind of independent art scene? Um, yeah, no, there's like a little, there's a, there's a mix of three things, I guess. There's a really strong, um, there's a really strong branch of traditional artisans who, who use traditional arts, crafts and design um, skills and elements to make work that's kind of really rooted in the Canarian history. There's um, a second branch that is definitely a commercial branch and like you say, mainly aimed at tourists, you know, landscapes, like little sculptures and replicas and things like this. But then there is definitely a third branch of more kind of contemporary art that's, that is art, you know, and is like, um, yeah, not for tourists and isn't, definitely isn't craft, but is definitely more of like a plastic art or a, or a fine art. Um, and that is here, um, but it's a, a very small community and um, access to contemporary art outside of the islands and bringing art to and from the islands is a huge challenge for anybody that lives here and wants to kind of send work for exhibitions in the mainland and also for anybody in the mainland that wants to have exhibitions here. The tax laws are not favorable to artists <laughs> at all. And so it makes it, that makes that really, really difficult to kind of establish relationships between here and the peninsula. That's something that I think is really challenging. Um, yeah, when I spoke, I, I spend a little bit of time at the art school in Arecife. Um, when I spoke to students there, they all couldn't wait to finish school so that they could go to Barcelona or Madrid or, you know, somewhere that they feel is like a proper place. It's, and so, and I was like, but this is an amazing place. Like, you know, you could make it. Like, you know, there's not a dance academy here, so I'm going to Barcelona to study dance. Well, like, let's get a dance academy. Like, let's sort stuff out, you know? <laughs> um, but obviously it's not that easy. Um, so yeah, so there is there is stuff happening here. It's not that there's not, it's just um, quite a small, quite a small scene. And so when someone has an exhibition, then everybody has seen all of that work. And so then quite often artists don't want to put that work up again uh so maybe you have like one exhibition a year you know and that's and maybe there's 10 or 12 artists doing that i mean i might I'm, i think i'm probably exaggerating the numbers slightly but i'm just trying to give the impression of what it's like you know right right that makes yeah. sense yeah and i think our biggest engagement from people that live in the canaries is from immigrants you know people who have moved here like ourselves um, not necessarily British, we have French, we have German, we have Hungarian, Italian, um, but we have a lot more engagement um, with them than we do with the local Canarian artists. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it's a commercial thing. Essentially, I think that I yeah it's difficult to know but I think that there might be something about like this isn't a festival where you go like I don't know like freeze or something like that where you're going to try and you know get a curator or sell your work or 
you know, find a gallerist who's going to promote you. It's not that kind of a festival. It's a festival, yeah. it's an artist-led festival, you know? And so maybe that, that might be why. I wonder if some, you know, because um, um, you, what's your name? Rich, you were suggesting actual workshops. It'd be interesting. I wonder if people coming to the festival would be interested in workshops of like these traditional artisanal things from the Canaries. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, some of the some of the stuff is so incredibly skilled, you know, like years and years and years to learn. And then however many years it's been passed down and refined and, you know, that kind of thing super special, isn't it? So um mm -hmm. And I think that all creatives appreciate that kind of intelligence, you know, like, yeah. So I think, history. yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's almost like physical inte intelligence. I remember when I went to um, Cyprus for my master's and I was talking to people who were making lace up in the villages and they're talking to me and they're making lace like <laughs> this, you know, and they had just like this kind of physical intelligence in their hands. They could just do it. They knew exactly. And the patterns were super complex. And and uh, they were talking to me in a second language because I my Greek was terrible. And they were talking to me in English. Yeah, super impressive. It's amazing. Yeah, it really, <laughs> it really was. It really was. Yeah. Uh, Rich, do you think that we're missing anybody in the festival community? Do we need to reach out somewhere? Are you still are you still with us, Rich? Yeah, it's me. Yes, yes, you. I watching me. Do you feel like there's somebody we need to reach out to or a community that we need to reach out to that's being missed at the minute? No. And uh, I have to leave in five minutes. Okay. So if there's anything I should know, you have to tell me now. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything that you need to know other than um, we're sending out an email to everybody it'll be tomorrow or the next day that's got, you know, all of the end okay. of the festival bumps that, that we need to let you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and just before you go, do you have an idea for a theme for next year? <laughs> Corona. Corona. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Peace. Peace, yeah, sure. That, yeah. The theme is something that we put out every year. We don't we don't get a say in what next year's theme is going to be. So we put out when we send out the email in the next couple of days, we we'll ask all the participating artists to suggest the theme. Then we'll kind of group those together and then put out a short list and, and see what comes up. Take a vote. That's yeah. what we normally do. Just take a vote. Okay. Um, yeah, this year it was really close, wasn't it? Between like there were three and there was literally like a vote between them. So that was a really interesting one. Yeah. But um, we have another chat message. <laughs> hard to specify a particular group to engage yeah maybe that's part of the problem peter that we're not being specific enough maybe we're being too broad stroke that's something to think about mm. um deborah any ideas on the theme i don't know i mean clash was great because it's slightly to the side you know, like we're, we're in the middle of a war and and it's not the only place that there are these wars and things but Clash is, it's general enough. So as you were talking, I was thinking of heat because it's so hot and there's climate change. Heat seems like the wrong word. It seems too obvious, but something about it's, it's getting hot, you know, or whatever um, in all senses. Mm. But a different word, and I don't know what it is offhand. 
So yeah, I see where that's coming from and that makes sense. And also, although heat's quite a simple word, it has got like a lot of different connotations to it, you know, in the same way that Clash does. Um, and the, the festivals so far um, have all had that kind of openness, you know, you can take things in lots of different directions. Um, and I quite like that. Yeah, heat, heat, even uh, it, it, the idea that you draw heat, you attract the attention of like the state or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people talk about like getting heat on, um, on the internet, on social media. They talk about that too, like something's getting hot. Yeah. yeah, I think that's got some. I got a, 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 a new team. Haircut. Go on. Haircut. <laughs> Haircuts. Yeah. <laughs> like your partner there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like it. It could be surreal. That could be yeah. a really surreal sort of a theme. <laughs> Thank you very okay, much. I have to leave now. Okay. Yeah, no, don't worry, don't worry. Thank that you for joining sense. us. And uh, I'm looking forward to the art camp next year. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the festival, Rich, and thank you for joining in this evening. Yeah, Rich, take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Um, Peter's put a comment in the chat about the themes that have already been, but um, no suggestions for a new one. People normally need a bit of time to percolate, to be fair. That's why we put it out in the yeah. email. Um, is there anything else you want to chat about, Deborah or Peter? I just wish I had been there. It looked, it looked so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so start saving. Um, <laughs> next year, you will be here from the 1st of July and you'll have an amazing month. <laughs> Yes. yes, sign up, make it happen, be here, be with us, we'd love to have you. I know, it'd be fabulous. <laughs> we are just about to get a direct flight route, aren't we, to, is it to New York? It's to New York, yeah. New York to Lanzarote or to Gran Canaria? Gran Canaria. Yeah, so there you go. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be sad. Most people <laughs> fly to Madrid and then over from Madrid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's from the Madrid. route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, anywhere in mainland Europe, the kind of the all the big commuter hubs, yeah, link up to the Canary Islands in some way. Yeah, I always find I travel quite a lot for work, and I always find that Stansted is a good kind of commuter airport because you get really cheap flights from Stansted to Lanzarote, and it's quite a big. London-based hub, so you can kind of get to it from lots of spaces. So that's my top traveling tip. <laughs> if <anybody needs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I also wanted to say, Deborah, thank you so much for all of your comments on the um Insta You, Insta Us, because it's really lovely to see your engagement with everyone's artwork. Oh, thank you. Yes, I it, I think it's important for people to engage with each other's work. You know, someone who makes work, it's nice. Um, so you, you don't feel like you're just throwing it out into the stratosphere. And the work is interesting. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I always enjoy it. There's still, there's still a lot of artists for us to post um, over mm -hmm. the coming weeks. But I, I really enjoy it because obviously we only get to see like one piece or two pieces from each artist prior to the mm. festival and then seeing everybody's work when it when it comes through on the insta you i was just i really enjoy that yeah yeah it's another nice thing about when artists come like um alan lack who's one of this year's um artists has been here this week and bought his postcards with him um and I saw all of his postcards and all of these different images. And I was like, uh -huh, so there's all of this to your work as well. Like, it just totally made me see his piece in a totally different yeah. way. And obviously then being able to talk, talk to him, it's, you know, it's even better. But yeah, I love Insta you Insta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much, Deborah, for joining us this evening and for all your contributions to the festival. 
And thank you for organizing everything and having a busy month. Yeah, I <laughs> know. We live for it, huh? We certainly do. We certainly do. <laughs> Take care okay. and hopefully we will see you soon. Yes, we'll be in touch. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you, Deborah. Bye. Bye.